Okay. Hello, people. I guess... I don't know. I've been feeling kind of... Feeling kind of... Funny. You know, lots of... Lots of things going on in my... In my head. So... I figure I would... Tackle... The big talk. The kind of... Elephant... In the room. And... To be frank with you... I... I didn't really want to do this at a point for years I didn't I didn't want to do this I would kind of yeah I'd talk about it kind of to people but I'd really skate around a lot of the aspects that I experienced with the thing. And I guess the big talk is going to be about. I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. Whatever went on with me. From. 2012. To 2013, those were like, those two years were very strange. I don't know. They were very intense, strange years for me, you know, as far as what I was experiencing on the outside and there were points where on the inside the thing was just it was insane but you know it did it get better it's better now it took it a long time for it to get like to the point where it is now there were Things I did, things I didn't do, things people, I don't know. It, it's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that went on. But at the end of the day, I know what I wanted to do and what I was setting out to do and what was Something that was completely, and I mean utterly, completely alien from what I wanted to do. And I don't even, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I guess you could say... No, you can't even really say that. I was going to say, I guess you could say some of the things started happening. But they didn't really start happening. There's been all kinds of funny stuff going on, you know, over my life. You know, like sometimes I just get these blips in in my mind. When I was a kid, I used to have like really bad nightmares and night terrors and I'd have these things where I would be asleep and I would wake up and I would be like completely disoriented it's not like I wasn't seeing anything but it's like everything was it's it's really tough to explain it's like you were 
It's almost like if you were spinning around, 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 and around, and then you got really dizzy, and stuff was just kind of out of focus and spinny like. Well, I would wake up to that a lot of the time when I was asleep. And throughout my life, I I would get the thing where I'd feel like there was some oppressive kind of force over me while I was sleeping, kind of paralyzing me. And I'd have a, just a cavalcade of like scary dreams about being paralyzed and Let's say a kind of fireball type thing. Floating towards me. And I can't move. But I can see it getting closer. And closer. And closer to my eye. Or I would have these dreams where things were like chasing me or whatever. And then eventually they get me and they kill me. And there'd be this very... Very, like, intense, distorted type of, I can't really call it music. It was kind of like a sound. And it was that same sound. I got that for a long, long period of my life. Over time, I, some things I kind of stumbled into, like, techniques that I learned that would kind of help me deal with the dream stuff, and it helped. A good majority of the time, it helped. But, I don't know, there was always this undercurrent of, like, strange things going on. When I was a child, there was never... It's never like I was, like, hearing voices or something, but... I'd have like an impulse of something. And I I had that even as an adult. Like just loud thought forms. Like. Yeah. Let's say you're, you're running a search on the internet. Or you're running a Usenet search for a book. And, you know, I would just, like, go to the, uh, the address, the, the news group, and I would just look at the names of books, not knowing anything about them, and I would just pick out a book, because it kind of. The, the name or something in the name or something about it. Basically, something in the name just caught my eye and I, I do that. Or sometimes you're in the shower or you're taking a bath. And, you know, a thought form pops up in your head. And uh, you... Like, a big example of this is, I was in a bathroom once, and at this time, this was later in life, and I was kind of on a battery of pills, pills, that's, uh, that, that used to be like a battle cry from an old friend of mine, when he was playing an online game, he would just yell pills. But I was on a battery of like 
some psychiatric pills at the time, but, you know, keeping that in mind, and despite that, I had a thought form in my mind that was just like, the body electric, very, you know, it wasn't like a, a, a voice, like on a big megaphone, just yelling, the body electric, but I, I, I had that thought form in my head, and I looked it up on the internet, and it was a book, so I downloaded the book, and I read it, and it was about some uh, some doctor guy trying to roll, trying to figure out how to make bones grow on like salamanders and stuff and if if bones could heal if if bones and animals could heal electrically by applying elec- like currents of electricity to them or something like that it was basically about uh how bodies have electrical properties But, you know, I've had things like that pop up. That doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm going to say right off the bat, that doesn't, when things like that happen, that, that doesn't mean, oh, I'm psychic. I don't know. That's that's my take. It's like shit like that just happens sometimes. But with the dream stuff, it's, it's weird stuff. There's always been, like, weird things that happen. I had a girlfriend. I know that's hard to believe if you know me. And she was kind of weird. And I don't know. If you... Looking from the outside in, you'd probably both call us pretty weird. But I don't talk to her anymore. And you know, I I talked to her for like years and years. We talked on the phone. And we talked on Skype. I talked to a number of people on Skype for like years. To the point where people have died. I can't, hey, I can't, (laughs) even if I was going on Skype, I can't can't talk to them anymore because they're dead. But, you know, there were good times with that. There were bad times with that. 2010, the person that I talked to that was my girlfriend for a short time, She came over to see me, and I don't know, we hung around each other, we talked, it was just the usual shit, you know, it it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, there were good aspects to it, there were bad aspects to it. Looking back on it. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad I handled things the way that I did with the whole thing, but there was a very vivid incident of me and her sleeping, and it wasn't like some sex thing. We were sleeping in bed. I woke up in the middle of the night. Like, in between sleep. And started just, I don't know, talking some some random weird words to her that neither of us knew what the fuck they were. And I don't know. I'd see you laughed at it because yeah, that's the way she operated. 
he was pretty... I'd say he was pretty militant on the atheist spectrum. And I don't know. I mean, I have an idea why that is. But at the end of the day, I'm not in her head, so... Uh, uh, you know, that's just my idea of why that is. I will tell you this. Uh, she had a grandmother on her mother's side that she was named after. And I see, I get the impression that she hung around her a lot as a little kid. And she used to carry around this pillowcase that belonged to her. But long and short of the story, she that grandmother lady was kind of known as being psychic. And she had this real I don't know, kind of anger toward Sylvia Brown and psychics, anything like that. Anything leaning towards the kind of, uh, what would you say, Western New Age metaphysical stuff. She didn't, she didn't like that at all. I... I don't know. I, it's it stuff's all it's all right to me. It's I'm you know. It's fair to call me a Zen guy, but I I've read all kinds of shit. I read books about. Tibetan Buddhism, Tibetan Dream Yoga, what's documentaries on bond, the kind of, the kind of, kind of indigenous Tibetan spiritual practice. It's kind of like the, it's, well, there's kind of like the, I don't, it's kind of like the new or a new take on the indigenous stuff in a way. But it's 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 definitely not it's not exactly Tibetan Buddhism, but I think there's a there's a figure in Ban or Boon or however you pronounce that. Who was said to be a Buddha, but it's not Shakyamuni, the historical Buddha. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I might be wrong about all that, but that's what I, that's what I got out of it. You know, I've read so much shit, my my head just starts pounding sometimes. But yeah, I've read. Uh, I read plenty of, there was a time when I, I used to listen to, like, all those wacky UFO people and the exopolitics people, the, uh, those guys, uh, I used to listen to Coast to Coast AM, on and off, because, you know, that show kind of sucks, uh, you know, just the usual suspects. Art Bell, when he was alive, I catch that sometimes. But can you say that I was a UFO guy or a a Western metaphysics New Age guy? Not, not really. I used to watch the YouTube's of Elizabeth Clare Prophet. She was kind of a her and her husband, 
I don't. They kind of ran some kind of an outfit, and her husband died, and she ended up running the thing. And she claimed she was supposed to be like the reincarnation of Joan of Arc or something, and she had a big wacky ring, and she, her big thing was like the science of the spoken word, and. She would get up and she would she would just recite different mantras. And I mean, Elizabeth was like, she was just reciting whatever. Just making her own shit sometimes and just reciting it. But she was doing I think she did some Hindi mantras. And she did the five Yani Buddha mantras and that was like years and years ago when I when I first heard them and I still do those mantras the five Yani Buddha mantras I feel like over the years they've helped me but over the years I started really studying what is what is this all about these five Five Johnny Buddhas. You know, I didn't just. I wasn't just an Elizabeth guy that was like, all right, all right, I think Elizabeth's you and I'm do it. But, yeah, once again, it was a it was a situation where I was just surfing YouTube and I came across. I came across videos of Elizabeth. Doing that, and I was like, "Wow, well, you know what? This is, this is, it's a mantra." And there's the kind of obligatory Tibetan mantra of every Lokitesvara, the Ummani Padme Hum. But every, uh, I'd say everybody knows that, but. A lot of people know that. that. That's what a lot of people think of when they, when they think of mantras. Or they think of like some Hindi mantra for like uh, Krishna or Shiva or something like that. Because there's a, there's a lot of that floating around on the internet. A mantra that I really found Helpful. Helpful. I hope my mouth doesn't sound funny or my microphone doesn't sound funny, but I guess we'll see when it's all said and done. A mantra that I found helpful over the years was the Medicine Buddha mantra, which Medicine Buddha is kind of like the form of Akshovia, one of the Five Johnny Buddhas. Uh, the Buddha of the Eastern region. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Buddha of the Eastern region. So, you know. They talk about... Uh, Baisaja, Guru, the Medicine Buddha, being uh, a form of Akshobhya, when he's practicing as a Bodhisattva. I don't know. I I kind of gravitated towards that mantra, and I. I've done it for years. I would. There's a point where I would do it a lot more vocally, but I, I don't. I don't really do that that much. I'll I'll recite it uh, and record like uh, a YouTube video of me doing it. I I've done that a couple of times, just for you know 
someone might see it, they might like it, too. And it, it might, you know, like I said, it might be something that they're interested in looking into or get a kick out of some wacky effect I can do with some of my sound things, you know. I don't know, but I, I, I found, I've found that helpful all the, the time. But, you know, this is going to be one of those things, too, where this is probably going to be like a, it's probably going to be like a really long YouTube. And it's just there for, for if somebody knows me and knows that I was kind of, something was going on with me for the past couple of years. You know, if they care to listen to it, you know, they can listen to it. If someone just stumbles up on it and listens to it, yeah, that's fine. Maybe, maybe you'll get something out of it. If you disagree with me, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm not trying to find people to agree with me. I'm just saying this shit because this, uh, this is the way I see it. This is what I what I felt was going on with me. But I I won't even you know, I'm hey, I'm still on the fence about a lot of shit. But there's some shit I'm not on the fence about. I'm vehemently not on the fence about and I wanna try as best I can to clarify what that shit is. So here we go. But uh, where, where, where was I? I don't even know where I was now at this point. I was talking about my ex and just weird situations that went on with with, with me when I was around her. And I don't know. My brain kind of works in a funny way, you know. Sometimes things pop up in my brain and, you know, sometimes I know it's my brain and that's fine. Sometimes I question, I'm like, where is this coming from? Whatever the case is, you don't have to, excuse me, you don't have to act on anything, you know, if it's coming, no matter where it's coming from. Especially if it's something like detrimental. But my point is, mm, my ex kind of had some weird, I don't want to say, people read too much, well, it's my opinion, or I think that people will read too much. From the thing, if I say some of the stuff that I'm probably going to just say anyway. But she had a... I guess some of those... Some of the wacky New Age metaphysical people would call it a... Weird energy field. I see... Exuded some weird, weird things. To me, at least. Shit. I don't know. There are things that I liked about her. There are things that I didn't like about her at all. But at the end of the day, and I was talking to a lot more people than I talked to when I was talking to her, when I first started talking to her. I was talking to a lot more people on Skype and on old chat programs that were still around at that point. You know, I, I think MSN, uh, MSN Messenger might have still been fucking around. MySpace. I don't think MySpace was around. But the thing is, you know, it, it is what it is. It, I, I liked her. You know, I cared about what was going on with her. I was definitely attracted to her. 
but you know something I don't know there were some things that uh, didn't really jive with me that well when I met her and it's like some of that stuff it's like She's responsible for doing it or for kind of going with that thing. But I look at the situation of where she was and the people she had in her life as far as family members. And, you know, a lot of that shit, you know, a lot of the things I didn't like, like that, you know. You could talk that up to stuff that she kind of got from them or she didn't, she didn't agree with a lot of their stuff, but still you you would find her kind of, she didn't act that way to the extent that they did, but she still had some sort of tics, but she also had these like weird tics. I don't know. Weird ticks are a funny thing. I guess that's the the moral of the whole series of events that I'm gonna try to try. And you know, it, other people might have totally different ideas about some of these things. Cause I'm I'm explaining the way that I felt when I was going through the thing and uh, for like years I didn't want to like I didn't want to try to focus too much on it right now I'm just trying to coherently put down the way I thought the thing was 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 experienced by me. But anyway, sometime in 2012, I was just going about my business and I'll say I was kind of I was having some rough times, you know. Family wise, I wasn't happy with some things that went on in a situation in my life, and I had, well, that girlfriend sort of kind of ex girlfriend person. Kind of, well, she had broke up with me, I guess. And she was like, she didn't want to move back in with her dad because her mom was going to move back in with her dad. And she was vehemently about, not about doing that. And I can, I can remember her just saying, fuck that shit. And that was, that was her sentiment towards moving back in with her dad. She's like, fuck that shit. And I could, I could see why she would have that sentiment. But she asked me if I could move, if she could move back in with, with me. And I, to be honest with you, I, I didn't want to do that, you know, for a number of reasons. You know, it wasn't gonna, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if, if people would have agreed with that anyway, or agreed to that, and I, I wasn't gonna ask them to do that, because I didn't really want to do it, I didn't feel like that was a, that was a great idea.
anyways, uh, eventually, uh, she decided to move into a homeless shelter instead of, well, I think for a while, like a couple of weeks, there was a time where she lived in like a cabin that belonged to one of her aunts for a couple of weeks, but they were, they let her do that just to give her time to make the decision of do you want to move back in with your dad and your mom and her younger brother and she didn't want to do that and you know I I don't know. I was like, eh, it's your choice, you know, but I can't. Uh, I don't. Probably not a good idea. I can't. I can't move back here. Yeah. You know, I, I understood the thing that she didn't want to. She didn't want to move back with her dad. Because when her mom got divorced from her dad, she had to testify in court against him. And she really didn't like her dad. And uh, there's reasons for not liking him. <laughs> he, wow. He was gonna, I talked to him on the phone a few times and, you know, I, I can't confirm everything that she told me about her dad. But I could I could tell that this guy's kind of he's rough. But anyway, all that was happening and I don't know. It was like this all had to have happened like 2012. And stuff was going on with her, and I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't like super, I was concerned about what she was going to do and what was going to happen with her, but I don't know. I wasn't like thinking about that 24-7 and all oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. I don't know, 2012, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of funny stuff happening but at this point in my life I I had ways of dealing with things like if I if I had like a panic attack or uh, like a bout with anxiety or if I had like a, a bad dream or if I was having a bad dream I I had ways of dealing with it. It wasn't like I was waking up from like dreams, like screaming and jumping out of bed or anything like that. It's, did I have bad dreams? Yeah, but I didn't, you know. I had a way of, I knew that, hey, this is a dream. Even if I'm getting some sensations in the dream, this is a dream, and it'll pass, and no matter what happens to me, it's a dream. It's about, I was just going about my business one, one afternoon in 2012, and I was talking to just regular the usual crowd of people that I talked to online I, I was on Skype I left Skype and I, I, I listened to a talk radio show about something or another it was just like some random thing and 
think I went to get a a glass of water or a cup of tea or something. I did that in the kitchen and I went back to the old room that I was staying in at the time. And this weird thing happened to me. And it was the first it was the first time this thing happened like this. This was like a distinct thing that I felt. It was like a pressure in my chest. And then this spike of like super intense panic attack, like anxiety thing. It wasn't like, oh, there's a voice beaming into my head or anything like that. It was just like a big spike of anxiety. Like, made you want to kind of jump out of your skin and run out of room. But I didn't do that. My heart started beating. I, I breathed in. And this is something that when I, when I get anxiety, I do this. I would breathe in through my nose and breathe out through my mouth. And I would count my breaths, like in through the nose, out through the mouth. That's one unit. And I do that and I count to five and I try to relax and I do that over and over until I was relaxed. And that was something that I found it was, it was helpful. I did that for like some years before this thing happened and it helped me out. Well, the thing happened, it, you know, I made a kind of note of it. I didn't think much of it, honestly. I didn't like, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't really tell anyone about it. I didn't rush to a family member like, oh my goodness, yeah, I got to go to the doctor. Something's going on. Because I, I just thought, oh, well, I guess whatever that was, it was a weird panic attack and don't know why that happened. And I just moved on from it, just went about my business. Eventually, she, uh, my ex, she went to, uh, the homeless shelter, and, you know, she did that for a couple of weeks. She met a bunch of homeless guys, and I don't know, I guess she, she, she ended up, like, wanted to be with this one homeless dude and you know that was her choice and you know I, I wasn't gonna I told her how I felt about the thing and how I felt about her and in the end she, you know she she, is, she chose that situation and you know yeah, whatever it was it was like about a year or so later she did call me saying uh, she couldn't believe that uh, that he dumped her. And that was, I don't know, that's one of the last calls I got from her. She she called again, but I didn't, I didn't really pick up the phone. Uh, I was going through all kinds of crazy shit anyway at that point. But to progress the story on, I had a... I don't, like I say, I wasn't happy with things really in my, in the room I was staying in, and 
I, I wasn't happy with just the general atmosphere of some stuff. And I had an argument with my brother. And it was a real big, it was an intense argument. And, you know, it wasn't a pleasant thing. I, I didn't like the way things were going. But, you know, whatever it was, it was. You know, I I still... There was a time where... I guess the biggest thing out of that was I just stopped eating dinner. Around there with them. And I wasn't communicating with them a lot, but... Honestly, at the time, I, there wasn't there wasn't a whole heap of communication before the argument. But you know, it's uh, it's a way better situation now, and you know, it's, there's I'm sure there's lots of reasons why that is. But, you know, despite all of that and the thing with my ex and the thing with the whole family situation and my outlook on the thing, I I didn't have an outlook like, oh, I'm just, I'm so angry I'm going to like hurt somebody or I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, I'm so frustrated with the world that I'm just going to do something to myself. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't my mindset. Like I say, I used to, before Microsoft bought Skype, I would talk on it a long time to a lot of people. Some people that I've known for years and years on other chat programs that are defunct now, like Excite Virtual Places and Voodoo Chat, Yahoo, you know, stuff like that, MSN Messenger. AOL Instant Messenger, things like that. I a lot of people would get on and play online games, but I, I, I wasn't really playing video games at that at that point. But you know, I I knew a good bit of people. Sometime in 2000 and 2012, I, the people I talked to and the people I knew, we kind of, we kind of ran into this group of people from Skype that I don't even know how I ran into them, but some people mutually knew these people and they were different people. They were, a lot of them weren't in there like late to mid twenties. Some were like early twenties and like late teens, like 19. I think 19 was about like the youngest people in the group. I don't know. They were kind of weird. And they all had their different things going on. This was before...
this was before the well, it was definitely before the whole Trump thing, you know. It was like 2012, 2013 and onward and you know, it, it, it hadn't become like like it is now. But there still was like yeah, there's always been internet trolls and uh, 4chan was a thing and some of these people, you know, they may have been from 4chan. They used to frequent a they used to frequent some site that was like Vampire Freaks or something like that. And there was this one 19 year old girl that had like a bunch of piercings and like she had like a big tattoo on her back of like some thorns or something like in some kind of a in some kind of a shape like a cross or something I don't know but she was big into piercings and tattoos and she was all dark and evil and I don't know they would get around, they would, some of these people, they ran the gamut between being like, oh my goodness, I really don't want to be around this person, they're so obnoxious, to, they're, they're okay, this, this person's kind of funny, this person's kind of cool, you know, they aren't a complete jerk. Some of them were fine, you know, they were just like, okay. Some of them were like, man, I really don't want to be around this person. This just sucks. But it was one of those deals where you you take the whole group, you know. You take the good, you take the bad, you get the fuck the life. But I don't know. I did that. There was one particular person and I, I won't say too much about him but he just I don't know he gave everyone a bad vibe and a lot of his pastimes were just trolling people making prank calls calling the FBI I think he tried to get someone swatted he was always trying to dox people like oh dox 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 with him, it was like a constant stream of that kind of shit. And it was like a constant stream of, like, these uh, obnoxious kind of semi-racist jokes, I guess. It, it was supposed to be... It was something where he's just, like, he's saying shit, trying to push... Trying to push some kind of a button to get some reaction out of you and... The other, his friend was, you know, him and the dark and evil chick where they were kind of like mutually good friends and they just, they just like trolling. I mean, not that they were young people and they just like to troll. I don't know. I remember I was on one night and it was kind of late and I was I was doing something online and the chick with the piercings that had a tattoo she just randomly calls me up one night and she's like you gotta help me you gotta help me oh my goodness John you gotta help me I've, I'm I'm at Seven, seven, blah, blah, fuck me straight. Ha <laughs> ha. And that was, I don't know. That was just her brand of humor. 
it, it, it could be jarring. She, I don't, it, the thing about her is, I, she could be serious and talk about how she felt about some shit because she recently got dumped by a guy. And that was like a big thing for her. And I don't know. She would hang out with her. Her friends where she lives. And they would all get on webcam. And listen to music. And dance and do stupid stuff. But you know. She. uh, Her and. Her and her friend that live near her, who she went to school with, I could, I could deal with, I could deal with them, but I, I, you know, to be honest, I didn't really much like the other guy who was on about swatting and the like. But I talked with them for a while. I talked to the regular, like, The usual suspects. Most of the time. And I talked to a mix of those two. And I guess I'll get to the big event. The main. The main attraction to the thing. I can't quite place, like, what month or when this happened. But, whatever the case, I started getting these things in in my... And I can't say... I can remember, I can, uh, I can vividly remember the first time it started to happen. I was, uh, I don't know, I was, I was talking to some people and we had a, I don't know. I, 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 I wasn't having a good time with the conversation and the way things were going. I guess. I don't know. It, it's it's hard to pin down exactly what was said or what wasn't said. But I, I wasn't like super angry or anything. It, it was just uh, we disagreed and it's like, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, we just left it at that. But I don't know, sometime, a uh, short time later after that, I just got this kind of tick in my in my mind, it wasn't like, it wasn't like some audible voice, per se, but it definitely was kind of like a thought form, and it wasn't like I'm having a thought form, and gee, this is, this is how I feel about the situation. It was more like, why don't you feel this way? Maybe you ought to do this. And that whole thought form thing was, uh, damn it, why don't you just wish the guy dead? And I was kind of like, uh, no fucking thanks. I'm, I'm not even really that angry with him. And, you know, I got that nagging thought form and I was kind of like in, in, in my mind, I was like, 
whatever F off. But over the coming week, I don't know, thought forms like that, they, they started to, they started to grow in my, in my mind. Everything was like, I don't, it felt like there were, and I'm, I'm just telling you how it felt as things progressed, it felt like there was this underlying thing, like, trying to steer me toward feeling a certain way about people, things in my life, and actions that I should take that were completely destructive and really negative stuff. I just kind of, when the shit first started happening, I just kind of put it in the back of my mind and I was like, whatever. And I just went about business as business as usual. Get up, take a bath, ride the bike, talk to people, eat something. Because I, I bought a couple of things on Amazon is for its food. So I just get up, do another day, and, you know, do my routine. You know, I, I had a routine at that point for a good while. You know, I, I exercise. I, sometimes I, I meditate, recite some mantras, either out loud or in my head. It's half the time nowadays when I'm reciting a mantra, I just do it in my head. I don't, I don't. But in any case, I, you know, I was doing that. I, I wasn't really plagued by bad dreams. I, the dreams got worse as the thing progressed. Whatever the thing or things may have been. And I want to... At this point, I want to kind of describe the things and how they felt, you know, uh, the thing... How I was experiencing it. It was kind of like. Just. Jarring thought forms. And. They had distinct personalities. And I know the personalities are kind of. They're kind of controversial. I'm not saying that they're. I'm not saying that these things were, I'm not saying that they were anything, you know, I'm, it all could just be like naughty neural pathways and, you know, my brain is just jacked up chemically somehow randomly, it just got messed, but what it was is it wanted to give me the impression that it was, there were Distinct factions. One faction was the kind of God-like voice of God. Like, kind of Old Testament biblical God. And, I don't know, the kind of series of things that that was running in my mind was and like not till I was pretty like till the point where the thing was like 
I couldn't really operate mentally. At that point, some of these things became audible. But it was always kind of like not really an audible thing. But the thing with the the God character was it wanted me to say a certain prayer and find a way to find a way to hang myself. And of course when I got the stop form when I when I got the suggestion in my head, just me, you know, on a guttural level, it made me really angry. You know, more so than anything, it just got me angry. Like, and I felt like it was a it was a violation. Uh, never did I feel like, oh, gee, that's a, you know what, shucks, that's a great idea. Matter of fact, when the thing happened the first time, I just, I lifted up my two middle fingers and I was like, F -em. and I got on my bike and I ran for an hour. I kept getting things like that, you know, it wasn't always the voice of God. Sometimes it was like, uh, I don't know. It was, it was kind of more like, it wasn't like demons or, oh, this is an, an angel. It was, I more got the impression from the other kind of group dot form thing that they were like, some kind of Satan occult early 20s group of people that decided to fuck around and try to get me to do something mentally to harm myself or to do something destructive so I had those I had the voice of God, then I had the, the, I don't know, the 20 something occult people that wanted me to take one for the team, and I was just like, you know, F you guys, and then there was a, along with that, there was kind of like, these kind of overlays of you're performing a task, you're doing something, let's say you're getting a glass of water, you're taking taking out the trash, because at that point I, I, I think I was still taking out the trash. You would get this kind of overlay of like thought bubbles about things around you and stuff. And some of it was like completely just nonsensical like you get the thought that maybe they're pumping they're gonna start pumping marijuana through the gas lines that was one I got I just laughed at that like whatever and I just went about my business uh, now that happened and that's You've got those, that's like at least two, and then the kind of overlay thought stream about things that you're visually seeing. And then there was another, there was another thought stream that was kind of, it wasn't as malicious as the other thought streams. But it kept trying to explain, like, what, what was going on and why this was happening. And I, I found that one to be, like, 
the weirdest in a way of them all because oh it had it all figured out i guess you know it it was it had a a weird kind of jargon to it that it would use but the first thing it told me after you know these these aren't really like audible things like i'm just listening to a radio There was a point, like, further on into the course of events where it, it, it was almost like a radio type thing. And it was hard to focus on, like, actually thinking and operating. But the thing that it kept emphasizing to me is that they, whoever they were, it wasn't wasn't very specific on day but it's a they are trying to kill you they are using quantum tunneling technology to access your brain and it also told me that the reason they were trying to kill me is because my 33rd birthday was coming up you yeah, know, it, it told me a bunch of other shit to suggestions to do to alleviate the shit going on in my brain. I, I don't know. You know, I didn't I was I didn't jump way on board on that and you know it's kind of a rough thing. You know, I can't, I guess ex explaining the way I felt about the thing at the time was I felt like whatever this is, it's, it's bonkers. I don't, I don't have a clear solution. I didn't, I didn't think it was a good idea. You know, to be honest with you, to try to explain to anyone, like, like in depth to anyone about what was going on with me. There was a point where things got really bad and I had the, I had the desire to get out and take some kind of psych pills or go to a some kind of facility but i i was in such a shape that it was a it, it was hard for me to communicate that to anyone like really coherently that i remember and i can you know if I did, I did. If I didn't, I, I wouldn't surprise me because the, the thing was very intensive. You know. It's like you had like... It was kind of like the analogy of like you have all these tones and some of them are they're going up some of them are turned down you have the tone of your own you know you present in your mind as much as you possibly can be that was kind of being drowned out i mean that's how the that's how the thing felt to me And there was, you know, I had some options or of what I could believe the thing is or the thing was or, you know, I, 
I I wasn't really I didn't really settle for any of that stuff, you know. Sometimes the voice I I I don't really want to say voice because it, it's not like a oh this is this voice coming into my head. It's you know explaining it like that is that'll give you the erroneous idea of what what the thing was like. Uh, the better thing to say sometimes the thought pattern or group of thought patterns that was making all of these suggestions to and the suggestions were they were wacky suggestions like I had some peppermint aroma oil one of the suggestions from the thought stream that gave me the thing about quantum tunneling and accessing the mind and this that and whatever was take your index finger take a dab of peppermint oil touch your forehead with it touch your cheek with it touch the other cheek with it lay down breathe in breathe out meditate and try to go to sleep and whatever will pass And hey, sometimes I I listened to that and I did that and sometimes it helped. But still, the thing was just gradually just just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I don't know. At a point, uh, I ended up on pills. You know, back on the pills. And yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't generally in a happy place. Previously, a friend of mine introduced me to a person. And, uh, Some months before shit went all wacky with me, she had a situation. She had a situation where uh, she had a mental break and she was back on pills, but she, she's she been off and on those things for a long time, like since she was 19. We used to get together on Skype. Me, her, and the one guy. We'd get together and we'd talk. We talked on and off for a while. They, they used to call me on the on the phone at a point. This was the guy that I was, it was suggested to me that I wish him dead. And why don't you just go ahead and wish him dead, damn it. Which, I, you know, me personally, I didn't have a desire to, to do that. But, you know, we talked on and off and he ended up uh, having a, a kidney issue and... This is around the 2012, 2013. We were all talking. She ended up talking him into going to the doctor one night uh, after, you know, because he wasn't feeling well for a long time. But he was just like, oh, I don't want to go to the doctor. I'm going to clean my ear out. I'm going to do X. I'm going to do whatever. But it got so bad that. She talked him into going to the doctor and it probably saved his life. 
he ended up getting stuck on dialysis. And, you know, uh, all of this stuff was happening in, like, 2012, 2013, 2014. As far as the uh, the internet troll group people, I, there was a point when this was going down that I just, I made the conscious effort to stop talking to them. You know, I, I didn't... I didn't accuse anyone of anything. I've never accused anyone of anything. I don't, you know, I don't think it's, oh, the trolls were doing this to me. I can't, you know, I can't say that. Something may have wanted me to pull the trigger on that idea. Something wanted me to pull the trigger on the idea of giving the giving the internet troll people that that like doxing people and swatting people they they something wanted to give me the idea of giving giving them the number to my ex I didn't think that was a good idea I, you know, whatever she did or didn't do, we didn't agree on whatever. I wasn't going to, like, sick the trolls on her to, you know, stick it to her. <laughs> Get them trolls. I would got to do that to her. But I kept getting that, that nagging thought form that this is what you should do, man. You should sick those trolls on her and they'll, they'll fuck her shit up, man. They'll ruin her world. I was like, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really concerned with ruining her world. But, you know, I'm just... I'm saying this stuff. So you get a flavor of where I am or where I where I was then. How I feel about the thing. How I feel about where the thing you know, what I was experiencing with the thing. I can't there's a point where I can't really I can't really speak coherently about some of the things I said to people or some of the things I done because I started, uh, I started just having like blackouts where I just felt like something was just overriding my brain and I just black out. That didn't really get bad until I started taking like psychiatric medicine. It sort of happened near about the end of the, the big thing. But when this thing first, when this thing first started happening in like, I think it was around by Superstorm Sandy or something like that. When it started really coming on like super strong. It. It. I've had things where I've had like mental issues. You know, I've had trouble with that. But there was a. There was a thing about this, especially from those those years, that felt like completely and utterly alien to me. You know, I could I could run with that thought form that wanted to explain it, explain exactly what it was and why. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't very, it didn't just go out and straight up accuse like this X group is trying to do this, but it was more like explaining what was coming and what was up next.
I got the thought form of beware they're gonna they were going to try and play the Jesus tape on me and get me to off myself I don't know yeah I'm just I'm just relaying the the thoughts that were coming in in my head at the time and I will I will say you know from my standpoint at the kind of negative malevolent I can't say that word very well malevolent voices voices in my and there was a point at, at the end where it was like kind of audible voices but there was never a point where it was like hey this is, this is Jesus and then do it I never got that I did get a kind of Old Testament biblical God, but you know, I, if they did have some sort of a JC tape that they were gonna play on me, and that's another thing I'd get in my head too. I'd get these like, I get these kind of word things, but I I don't know. I I, I get those sometimes. Like I used to get those randomly sometimes. I, fixated on like a word and what it means you know I have a friend I have a friend that I've known for a while on on a chat a voodoo chat and he used to he used to be in the air force and ironically his name is John Carmack J C and you know there was there was a kind of an overlay in my mind of J C John Carmack John Carroll Jesus Christ <laughs> it I don't know it's kind of makes your life hard to focus when you have something like that kind of running in your head over and over you can ignore it. Dude, I... I'd like to think I ignored all of this stuff and tried to just function for a fair enough time. Wasn't pleasant. Anyways, when you're down in something like that, it's you can't just shut it off. Even if you take pills, it, it, it might help. And it, There's a price to play it pay with the pills because they'll make it hard for you to focus in in other in other ways mentally it's like just you can't really like pinpoint the things you know it's just kind of like a pills become a thing like a kind of shut off valve to just shut it all down damn it yeah. There was a point where uh, that, uh, yeah, I was, I was all, I, I wasn't enthused with just shutting it all down. And I still had the other voice of telling me, I had the other kind of thought pattern of like telling me things like, you ought to do this thing, you know, you ought to do that. But I'd say after about uh, after about a maybe sometime in 2013 just like the the straight up thought pattern things that were distinct like okay this is this is biblical God, and this is, this is, team, 
What would you call them? Uh, team Generation. Team Satan Generation Z. I guess would be a good day for it because it's just a bunch of weed smoking 20 year old, 20 something year old devil people. Then you had, you had the main office that wanted to explain everything to you about fucking quantum tunneling and metatronics and the human electrical system and all of this kind of, it was kind of a cross between like metaphysical jargon and science fiction jargon. That kind of, uh, you can hear the cat, it's just going nuts. I'm probably going to pause this for a while. But, it was that thing kind of going in, in, in my head. Of, you know, I could have like just ran with that full on whole hog and been like, yeah, it's the, uh, you know. This is long before people were talking about, they were always talking about like CIA and like, what would you call it? Like psychotronics, like some technology to access the mind and beam out frequencies to kind of tease your psyche into feeling a certain way emotionally or kind of sliding some form form of foreign thought forms into your mind via whatever means you know via some kind of technology or via via some kind of occult means where some people send some malevolent spirit to kind of chastise your mind and get you to do something to harm yourself. Those ideas have been, you know, they've been bandied about uh they picked up popularity, I would say, in the 70s. But, you know, I, I was aware of that. I, I've had mental issues for years, man. At least since, like, I don't know, maybe... 2006 maybe maybe even earlier than that I don't I don't fucking know but it was never like it was never like this thing and you know like I say could I say that it all started that that afternoon With that, uh, excuse me, uh, with that sharp pain in my chest and then the, the panic attack. As far as the kind of, the high strangeness of it and the way that it felt like, it felt like something completely not, not like what I've ever experienced in my life. I've experienced bad dreams are, I don't know, my stepdad, he used to talk about hags or something and you would have like sleep paralysis and I don't know, there was some point in my life where 
he told me that he was going through that and he got a piece of young wood from somewhere and he put that at the top of his his door leading to his bedroom I don't know if that helped I don't know if that helped them or whatever but you know I I didn't have any real I didn't have any real interest in doing that when I when I you know when dreams got really bad for me and they, they, they've been off and on pretty bad for me I, the thing that helped me with dreams really personally was reading the Tibetan Book of the Dead because in that they talk about the kind of Bardo states like in between like there's a Bardo of dreams there's the Bardo of birth and death like these intermediary stages between a dreaming world and a waking world in between being born and being and dying. And the way they described it is a kind of, it's a kind of magnetic thing there. There will be these shapes, stop forms, armies of things that are going to chase you down and try to hurt you and you know if they get you and they they they're 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 hurting you just uh just be grounded in try to try to be grounded in the fact that where you are is this is the bardo and no matter what you're facing chains chains is a constant everything is in flux and if you you can rest in the fact that there is space, you know, there is space between things. Like, space is an element, like, in all things. And there's a point where you can endure whatever it is you're facing, like, physical or mental pain if, if you just rest in that space between things and know that things are in transit. You know, there's a there's a empty nature to all things. That, that doesn't mean that there's nothing there, but what it means is that there's space between the things. You know, you can you can rest in that space.